On May 16, 1968, a Marine CH-53 Sikorsky Heavy Lift helicopter with 16 men aboard attempted a landing on the helipad at the top of Toro Peak. Little did everyone on board know that they would soon be tumbling down the steep embankment just below the helipad. Careful though, Bill. Watch your step. My friends, Robert Marcos and Sid Burks, decided to try to find that helicopter crash site. We went into the Santa Rosa Mountains and up a 15 mile long U.S. Forest Service road to the top of Toro Peak. We made our way from the desert floor all the way up into the pine trees. Toro Peak has an elevation of over 8,000 feet and we left from sea level. It took us about an hour and a half to get up to the top. At some places you could see the Anza Borrego Desert below and we got to see some poetry from an eccentric artist who used to live on Toro Peak. You can't get all the way to the radio transmitters at the top of Toro Peak. You have to park down below behind a gate that's locked. They have a lot of sensitive equipment up there. So we donned our backpacks and started the steep climb to the top of the peak. It would be another 350 feet of elevation, but it was steep. Well, this is steep, I tell you. It's not what I expected. Here's a Google Earth view of the helipad and the crash site. Well, we found the helipad, and it was definitely large enough for a CH-53 helicopter to land. This was a real beast. It was 88 feet long, 15 feet wide. The rotors were 72 feet across. From the edge, we did a scan below us. The first thing we saw was a large part of the engine which the rotors attached to. You could see it from the helipad, and that's exactly where the helicopter went down. Which gave us a first-hand account of the crash of this CH-53. There were 10 of us from NWCS-3 El Toro aboard with all of our radio equipment. This was a training exercise to establish a microwave link from El Toro to MCAS Yuma. Also aboard were two generators, five drums of diesel fuel, and one drum of gasoline. There were four members of the flight crew, one Navy corpsman and one additional passenger. The passenger was an off-duty member of the helicopter squadron who was just along for the ride. He spent most of the flight sitting on top of one of the generators. When we hit the trees and rolled, he was pitched out the door, our only fatality. The tail section you found was torn off in the air. After the rotors hit the trees and the main body started to spin with the tail striking trees and breaking off, the body rolled at least once as it descended through the trees, coming to rest on the right side. I remember digging myself out from under the pile of backpacks and sleeping bags and looking straight down through the window and seeing fire. We all exited through the rear, swinging out on control cables and making a 15-foot drop to the ground. Upon impact, the flight deck detached from the main body. The crew exited through there. The fire pretty much destroyed what was left of the body and flight deck. I remember looking over the site and seeing the engines and empty 55-gallon drums laying on the ground. Shortly after the crash, a fighter pilot saw our smoke and came to investigate. It was another four hours before the first rescue crews made it up the mountain. We were taken to March Air Force Base to be checked out, then flew back to El Toro that evening on another CH-53. After exploring this crash site, I'm amazed that there was only one fatality. We found debris for almost 400 yards as we made our way down that steep embankment. That last fuel drum was actually visible from the road that we drove in on. And there's a 55 gallon drum that looks like it's rolled all the way down and we know they were carrying drums of fuel in the helicopter and Robert you filled one already didn't you? I did. Yeah. Well our trip to the top of Toro Peak certainly did not disappoint. What an adventure we had. It's always sad to visit a fatal wreck but it's an honor to keep the memory of these young men alive. <laughs>